Hi, I'm Stumpy Nubs, and today I'm going to show you how to carve portraits in wood, even if you have zero artistic ability. At Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, we get a lot of email from subscribers who are looking for simple projects that they can make for craft shows or to give away as gifts. Well, this is one of those projects. It's unique, it's personalized, and it's so easy it can make anyone look like an artist. Here's what you do. You begin with a photograph. It can be anything from people to pets to landscapes, anything you want to carve. Load the photo into whichever editing software that you have. If you don't have a photo editing software, there are dozens of free programs available online. The first change we'll make is to turn the photo into a black and white image. Then we're going to boost the contrast until we have just enough dark on the image to distinguish the features while eliminating as much of the gray shading as possible. Now print out your image. I used a black marker to add a few of the lines here and there that were lost when I boosted the contrast. The idea is to make all of the parts you want to carve away black. Now less is more. You don't need full outlines around every feature just where the shadows are, beneath the nose, behind the ear, and so on. Now get yourself some high quality spray adhesive. Use the good stuff. You don't want this peeling off while you work. You can use just about any wood you like, but I would suggest a light colored hardwood. I'm using a soft maple. Now you'll need some carving tools, not a lot of them, maybe just a V tool and a small gouge. You can certainly do this project with regular carving tools, the process that I'm going to show you will be exactly the same, but I'm going to use a new tool we recently got our hands on. It's Arbitech's new Power Chisel, an electric carving system that's popular among professional wood carvers. It uses interchangeable chisels that come in a number of common profiles. They lock in place and are easy to swap out quickly. This is the first time I've used this tool, so I'll be giving you my opinion while I work. But like I said, the actual carving process is the same whether you use a power chisel or standard gouges. Once your glue is dry, secure your project to a bench and it's time to get to work. All you have to do is carve away the black areas. It might seem intimidating at first, but you're not really drawing a portrait. That work was done for you at the computer. You're just removing the black areas. Much of the work is going to be done with the V gouge, particularly the fine lines around the face and the individual hairs. Depending on how well your glue held, you may have some difficulty with the paper peeling away. Just do your best to keep what you need of your pattern in place and you'll be fine. I was worried that the power chisel would be awkward and uncomfortable to use. It's certainly bigger than a standard gouge, but it didn't take me long to get used to it. It really works like a gouge and mallet. The blade doesn't vibrate, there's a fast tapping motion that engages when you put pressure on the chisel's edge. Pro carvers will use light mallet taps on the end of a chisel to give them more control through the cut as compared to the constant pressure of just hands alone. Those fast taps make it easier to turn quickly without the risk of slipping past your marks. The power chisel mimics that mallet action, only the taps are tiny and much faster, making it very efficient. I'm using soft maple, but it's soft in name only. This is a very hard wood, yet it's carving easily with little effort. Of course, the key to any carving tool is to touch up the edge often. I use a stropping block with various profiles and bits of leather attached to it. It's better to touch up your edge every few minutes than to wait until it gets too dull, and then you're gonna have to spend a lot more time reworking that edge. As you carve, you'll have to change directions to avoid cutting against the grain as much as possible. I had no difficulty doing this with the power chisel. Its size was quickly forgotten. Like I said, it's really an electric chisel and a mallet, so it isn't really that much bulkier than those two tools would be together. And I actually found it a lot easier to use left-handed than a mallet is for me. I can guide the chisel with one hand because it really isn't vibrating much. The motor is just lightly nudging the chisel forward. It's difficult to describe without actually feeling it. I expected a reciprocal in and out motion, but it's much subtler than that and very effective. I really wasn't pushing very hard with my arms. Once the tool senses pressure on the end of the chisel, it begins helping you along automatically. It's important that you remember that any parts that you want to be dark in the finished project, 
has to be carved below the surface. You don't want to go too deep, but if you only scratch the surface, you'll likely end up sanding those marks away when we finish up. I also went back after I had dug out large dark shadows in the hair, and then I used the V tool to add some of the individual hairs at the bottom of those indentations. Even though those lines won't be a different color, they'll give the carving some added depth and it'll help show the direction that the hair is actually flowing down the side of the head and where the part is. When you're finished removing all the black areas on your pattern, it's time to paint. I suggest a dark brown or black spray paint. Make sure that you get in all those little crevices. Let it dry, and then I also peeled off as much of the pattern as I could so it took less sanding later. Then I used a sander to remove the paint and what was left of the pattern from the surface. I used 60 grit paper, which worked quickly without clogging up from that paint. But you have to be careful not to take too much of the surface off. If you do, you'll lose any of the shallower lines that you carved, which takes away a lot of the fine detail. In fact, I decided that I had sanded too much away. So I went back and did some more carving to replace those dark areas. Keep in mind that if you do go back, you'll probably have to deepen some of the shallower lines that you already made. They might look good now, but after you repaint and resand, you might take some of those off if they're not deep enough. The whole project took about two hours, which was sped up considerably by using the power chisel. I would expect it to take longer if you're working by hand and aren't a pro carver. And I have to say, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this project. And I can imagine a lot of different possibilities for other designs, perhaps some carved plaques or signs. Maybe you could find some clip art online and make decorative wall hangings. The possibilities are really endless. As for the Arbortec power chisel, it really impressed me. I expected it to be heavy and awkward and the vibrations would irritate my hands, but I found the opposite to be true. If I had to point out something negative, I would say that it is noisy. So hearing protection is a must. And every 15 minutes or so, you have to add a couple of drops of oil to a port behind the mechanism, which is a small inconvenience. They also offer flat chisel attachments, which I'm gonna try and get my hands on to see how they can be used for other woodworking applications. In the meantime, be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal for more great projects, tips, tricks, and infotainment. You can find all of the past issues in our archives and subscribe to upcoming issues for free at stumpynubs.com. And we'll see you next time.